Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to a new episode about art and NFT, again, of course, on the Nemesis. I'm Amelia Tomasicchio, the CEO and co-founder of Cryptonomist. And today I'm very happy to talk with Federico Solmi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Thanks Hello. a lot for this interview. Thank you. My pleasure. So, Federico, um, can you please uh, introduce yourself and uh, let us know more about your career? Yeah, I'm a, an Italian artist uh, that uh, uh, lives in New York City. I moved here in, two, in the year 2000, actually 1999, and I've been involved mainly with uh, uh, the, the traditional American art world, uh, showing in uh, various galleries in New York, LA, and a lot of museum exhibition and biennial and art fair. So this has been somehow like uh, my uh, work that I did in the past, uh, let's say 20 years, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, like uh, I'm a kind of unusual uh, training and uh, uh, I never went to art college. I became uh, an artist uh, uh, just really like by observing uh, other, uh, you know, practice. Uh, and, uh, you know, back in 2003, I became very interested uh, in uh, video game development, like, you know, uh, and in the gaming technology that was blooming, that was developing, and I become very attracted to this world. So, and of course, uh, back in 2003 was a world that was not really paid attention by the established from the art world. So, and uh, since then, I started to develop like, uh, uh, you know, narrative, uh, uh, social commentary, video animation, combining gaming technology and drawings and painting. So somehow my work, if I can summarize very quickly, is a sort of like, a, um, you know, like a, a union between traditional media, like drawing and painting and performance, combined with all of the digital uh, innovation and tools that they are offer to uh, the artists today like, you know for example i've been developing video installation i do in a lot of vr work i recently did uh, um augmented reality work so uh, but always with the, the support of traditional media so um and so you you define yourself more a painter or a, a, a gamer, a, a director, because I guess also you you made a, a, like a, a short movie. So how do you like to de define yourself? Well, to me, like, you know, to be a painter is uh, uh, is, com is not really correct because I am really not the guy that, uh, you know, sit in front of a canvas with a brush. Like, you know, to me, the center is always narrative like you know and for example like you know most of the work start as a, a, a project for a video installation for a public uh, uh, you know display in a square or for example right now i'm developing like a series of like a new uh, character that will be a part of uh, a series of, of new nfts and also a new vr work so in a way, drawings and paintings, it goes to help uh, the structure of all of these digital uh, uh, assets that you see in the slideshow. So um, basically, um, you know, I never felt like, you know, like the guy that has to go to the studio and fight with the canvas. So if I do a canvas, if I do a drawing, they're always like, you know, in a way, derivative work from imagery and from narrative that I created into uh, other work, you know, which are often, you know, digital. Yeah. So the NFT world came uh, into your uh, your career. When exactly? When uh, did you start to, to know about NFT? Uh, actually, uh, the, the, the first kind of like uh, introduction to NFT came to my studio, um, I would say approximately two years ago, and uh, and actually was in a very unexpected. So I, I had a collector that uh, bought some of my uh, paintings, actually, and uh, he kept coming to my studio uh, to tell me, hey, Federico, you know that your work will fit very well 
in the crypto art. And I said, what the hell is crypto art? You know, so I mean, I've been on a cutting edge, you know, uh, for many years. I've been, you know, bringing along my experience to uh, college like Yale University, Carnegie Mellon, all of this. But I never heard about any such Rico. Listen, this is like a, a group of like uh, uh, artists that often uh, then they're not accepted into the establishment of the artwork that they develop uh, uh, with digital tools, you know, a series of like uh, still image and video animation. And he keep, he keep telling me, Federico, your work is made for this world. You know, so I said, okay, you know, step by step, you know, I started to investigate a bit uh, uh, with, of course, uh, uh, with a bit of skepticism, like, you know, and then, uh, you know, I started to, um, start to do research about uh, uh, mainly which are the foundation of this new movement like the crypto art and i start to discover like you know crypto uh, sort of like uh, um uh, how can i say like novels like snow crash like this kind of like book that are kind of like a call for this kind of like uh, uh, vr uh, and, and very soon i discovered that pretty much like you know uh, I was doing crypto art way before the term was like, you know, existing because I started to do this video animation back in 2003, 2004, when people that were looking in the art world as like a, a sort of like a punk, like a, a sort <laughs> of like, a, you know, like a disruptor, you know, so. And that's the yeah, you were just not using the blockchain, but the style were uh, perfect for, uh, for the... Absolutely, also I've been made a living and support myself through the sales of like uh, video work, you know, so way before, I'm talking about that, you know, 2000, 2005, you know, you know, and since then, every year my goal was developing a main video animation or a video installation and then, you know, bring it to museum, to gallery, <clears throat> and, you know, with some uh, very good success. Like, you know, uh, simply, simply, it was very difficult to, uh, to understand how a collector could spend all of this money by buying a DVD or buying, like, you know, uh, USB flash drive. But to be honest, you know, like, uh, I have phenomenal support, you know, phenomenal support, because my work is always like, uh, involve a lot of like um, uh, assistant that helped me to develop all of the digital assets, you know, a musician and uh, and people they help me to coordinate all of these projects. So <clears throat> then when um, when uh, you launched your first uh, NFT and on uh, which platform? OK, I think I launched my first NFT back in March of this year. <clears throat> Uh, a series that uh, uh, was called The Smokers, uh, and we launched it uh, on uh, Blank Platform. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, Blank. Like, you know, it's uh, a platform that uh, <clears throat> I think is based uh, like in China mm -hmm. and uh, is, uh, you know, a pretty cool project. Um, and uh, it was immediately super successful. Uh, we sold the NFT immediately, and uh, and since then, you know, uh, I you know started to show it also in super rare, <clears throat> and now there is another, you know, like uh, many platforms that are actually approaching me, and I'm trying to define a strategy of what uh, you know what's the balance between uh, between all of the work that I do in the museum and galleries, and uh, you know, so and yes, it's been pretty good, you know, so so far. I'm new. I I I was watching your uh, Twitter account. Yes. And I I was uh, I was watching you are working on some um, metaverse project. Can you tell yes. us more? Yes, I've been a bit secretive about this. So basically, in the past, uh, let's say like six seven years, I really uh, I, I was really captured by the um, you know the sort of like. Uh, propaganda and uh, uh, unjust aspect of American history. So I started to create all of this uh, fictional story about Native American, founding father, and basically criticized very harshly uh, the controversial past of uh, uh, American history. Since I'm, you know, I've been here for 20 years in New York. So uh, this chapter is closed. You know, I'm still showing work with uh, uh, related to this body of series, but it's been like six months at least that I'm developing 
completely new character, contemporary character from, um, you know, Silicon Valley tycoon, social media founder, a cryptocurrency uh, uh, founder, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, and basically I'm trying to, instead of investigate the past, I'm trying to envision how could be a futuristic society, like, you know, and mm -hmm. what, what will be the role of uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, uh, um, all of these people that somehow they have this immense power, this immense uh, amount of money. And uh, of course, my goal is to uh, create uh, like uh, an environment that is not necessarily a physical environment, but is something that uh, will happen in a pixelized VR futuristic environment, you know, which could be a war, there won't be any physical object. For example, at the moment, I'm working on trying to develop like a sort of like a square, but the square of the future, it won't be like with a monument in the center, with a church. So I'm trying to envision how, when we're gonna meet in 20 years, in 10 years, in five years, into this meeting point, how could uh, could be so? It's very so basically, it's like the so basically it's like the method of uh, the art, uh, the, the crypto art uh, is changing also the subject of your art itself. Absolutely, you know I'm very sensitive. So you know at the end, like you know at least for me, like you know. Uh, the work of an art is a reflection of uh, of the experience that uh, is going through, like you know. So, and uh, you know, I know that I I was reaching a sort of like a, a dead end with uh, you know American history. And to be honest, like you know, now all of the work that I did in the past six seven years became the center point of the narrative of the American art. So everybody now they are working on this subject. And to me, I was way ahead of like all of this, uh, you know, critique to, you know, um, to like uh, criticize uh, the ethnocentric view of American history. So to me, I'm done there. Now, to me, the goal is to invest the next five years, you know, because that's that's the length of the project, you know. So when I jump into a new project, it's not like a, a three month thing, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's my goal, like, you know, and in fact, for the first time in my career, the center, the main work and I'm trying to develop is a VR work. It's not a painting. It's not a video installation. It's something that, you know, like uh, is uh, is basically project the viewer not to be simply a spectator in front of a screen, but will be the narrator he will immerse or she will immerse him into this digitalized future and they won't be simply there to look no they will be empowered to choose their narrative and that's i think is something that i'm very interested in, in conceptually like you know and how do you see the future for nft you think it's here to stay and uh, the, i don't know the the traditional uh, art uh, actors will try to to change this world to to control it to me to me it's very simple like you know and i've been dealing this for many many years so the digital assets and digital artists they are there they're they're here to stay and they're here to rule the future uh, and i tell you why very simple in my opinion you know is that uh, you know, all of the new generation, like, of course, you or my son, my, my daughter, they don't necessarily feel so attached to physical object and to physical, uh, to the physical world. Like, you know, that's, that's, that's a fact. Like, you know, maybe some people can say, oh, this is sad. But, oh, but, but when, uh, for example, I, I pointed to my son, uh, Luca, would you rather have a painting of mine or would you rather have an NFT? No not in a second nft you know he he is like a part of the generation they say well you know if i travel 
I can use it as a screensaver and I have the NFT with me. So uh, to me, like, you know, all of the speculation about, oh, you know, uh, the NFT, they're going to go away. No, you know, all of this bad mouth and their mouth that you hear is because there is uh, like, a, you know, like a, a hierarchy of uh, power. Yes, some sort of fear. Of them, yeah. And they're not simply part and they're pissed. They're pissed, you know. So if I look at myself, like, you know, 10 years ago, <clears throat> which I was very convinced that the work I was doing was right, was impactful, and was looking at the future. Uh, it, it was a struggle to, to get the visibility that I have today. So tomorrow, you know, I present my first VR work in an exhibition in LA, Los Angeles, like, uh, uh, you know, until a few months ago. It was a blast. The VR piece, people love it. The 10 years old love it. The eight years old feel again like a child. You know, it was, uh, it was the first time that uh, uh, I was able to convince a gallery to create a big room just devoted with three VR stations. It was a complete success. They never exhibit a VR piece in their, in their history of the gallery, like, you know. And now I'm, uh, I'm really like uh, ready to, to bring it to museum and, uh, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. And the pandemic, of course, helped, you know, help because yeah. uh, we find ourselves isolated, like, you know, so, but to me, this is like something I've been carry on for 20 years, you know, so, you know, I know the good time will come, like, you know, and the more, you know, in 10 years, even better, much better, like, you know, because the, you know, the, the new generation of curators, museum directors, they grow up with that, you know, so the only things that, you know, it's very hard to find great VR content and also VR from, from an artist's point of view, of course. And VR work, you know, uh, require big investment, like, you know, with a, a very small chance of return or making the return of the investment, like, you know, but to me, I don't care. I make enough money to uh, bring it, uh, you know, with the sales of other things to invest in research and, you know, uh, and money will come like also in this uh, in, in this industry I have no doubt with the art world thanks a lot Federico for your time thanks a lot for this interview okay. I invite everyone who is watching this uh, this video to um, to check your website there is federicosalmi.com and to check your super rare uh, NFTs sure NFT of course and thanks again thanks a okay. lot for this interview bye guys bye bye, bye. bye. bye.